Hello students from Johnson University's Foundations in Theology class. I am your instructor, Dr. David Russell Mosley. So I wanted to make what will hopefully be a short video on Calvinism and Arminianism. And I wanted to make this video because I removed an assignment on this uh, subject, so I thought it would at least be appropriate to comment on it, on the subject, not on the assignment. Um, so, for those of you who were unfamiliar before you did your reading, Calvinism and Arminianism are actually two Protestant ways of understanding uh, kind of salvation, grace, and free will is typically how that's put down. Uh, and I stress the fact that it's Protestant because what that means is that they're actually relatively new ideas in many ways. And as I've said before, I am distrustful sometimes of things that are new. So Calvinism is based, it's kind of based on the thought and theology of John Calvin. And when I say that, what I mean is anytime you come across an ism that's named after a person, Typically, that person wouldn't often fit into the ism. So, like, Luther would not be happy about the fact that his church is now called the Lutheran Church. Um, Calvin wouldn't be happy with the idea of Calvinists. Um, Augustine wouldn't be happy with the idea of Augustinians, and, and so on. Uh, because it's putting way too much emphasis on them and not enough on God. So, if any of you ever feel that way sometimes, the people who founded those things probably would feel the same way. That being said, Calvinism is basically, and I mean, you've already done quizzes on this and stuff, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but Calvinism is basically the idea that um, we are totally depraved due to the first sin of Adam and Eve, uh, that we can do nothing to merit our own salvation, we can't even want to turn to God, which for a Calvinist, even the desire would be some kind of work on our part. Uh, so it's very much so against a works-based salvation. Um, and that, in fact, the only people who can turn to God are the people that kind of God turns to. That is, that God elects, foreordains, predestines those who will be saved. Um... The consequence of not being part of that is that you'll be damned. But most Calvinists won't say that God God predestines the damned. He only predestines the saved. And everyone else is just damned. I personally don't think that works. Um, I think that if God is predestining the saved, he's also predestining the damned because he allows the damned to exist. But those are issues between Calvinists and non-Calvinists. Um, Arminianism is named after a guy called, um, basically Jacob Arminius, uh, Jacobus Arminius, uh, and he stressed the free will side of things, um, basically saying that we can, while we can't merit our salvation, that is, we can't earn our salvation, uh, we can want to be saved. We can make the turn to God. I anyway, I talked about some of this in a previous video talking about um, total depravity, Augustine, Pelagius, all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, so that's that's how those those two things are, are typically typically understood. I it, my personal recommendation is to go back and see what theologians were saying in the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth even all the way up to like the 13th centuries about this. See what people were saying about it before Christians started dividing over all sorts of issues. Uh, because I think that the, to an extent, the further back that we go, um, we'll get to a better understanding. Though I also think that there's some room for development there as well. Uh, for instance, you know, as the Restoration Movement, we often talk about being an Acts chapter 2 church, or at least a lot of churches do say that. Uh, but of course that's problematic because we don't act at all the way the Acts chapter 2 church did. Is we don't meet daily, um, we don't take communion daily, uh, we don't, you know, most of us haven't shared large tracts of land to give to the needy, um, so on and so forth. 
But the point being that there is there is room not so much for development, but for uncovering of things uh, as as time moves forward. Um, and anyway, I, I bring all that up simply to say that I find that it's a good idea not only to read our Bibles, but also to read what early theologians said about the Bible, how they understood it, how they understood the themes and the ideas that um, sometimes aren't fully explained in Scripture. Um, because that could, in fact, give us a good idea of what, you know, even the apostles themselves actually believed. Uh, because potentially better than trying to really deconstruct the language within a text itself. But anyway, um, I would encourage, you know, just seeing what, what, what do, what does Augustine actually say? And that's always a good idea. Um, similarly, you know, what does Calvin actually say? But I would also, I would look at, I would look at other thinkers. I mean, look at people like Gregory of Nazianzus or Athanasius of Alexandria. Um, look at them, consider their opinions on, on the connection between grace and free will. Um, John Cashin is someone who is, who is mentioned in a few of your papers on, on, uh, total depravity, Augustinianism, mankind's sinfulness. Um, uh, personally, he's an excellent author, um, I think. Uh, and I, I think he happens to be right when it comes to salvation. And actually, I don't, I don't think Augustine, he disagrees nearly as much as a lot of people think they do. Um, but the point being, what I'm, what I'm really trying to get at here is encouraging you to look beyond the new. The, even, I mean, even the 16th, you know, century, that's, that's still relatively new. There's still 1600 years of Christianity that exist before that. Um... So go back, read, read the primary texts for yourselves. That's really what I want to advise all of you to do. Um, if I could have, I would have assigned you all sorts of primary texts to read for this class. And if you take my Trinity class, that's almost all you'll be doing is reading texts from theologians from the 4th century all the way up to the 20th, uh, even the 21st century more than 20th. But anyway, you, you see my point. Um, but read those things for yourselves. Um, and personally, again, I just, I find it really useful to avoid Calvinism or Arminianism altogether and try to look back at what the ancient and even the medieval church thought about salvation and thought about grace and free will. Okay. Um, this video is a bit weird, whatever. Watch it, comment on it, get some extra credit. All right, God bless, guys. I'll see you later. Bye.